All right, it's good to have everybody with us tonight. We are very thankful for the opportunity that we have tonight, for the celebration that we have, the baptism, uh, baptizing Andy here in a few minutes, and so we're very thankful for that. We're going to celebrate that. We're going to have a time of prayer, uh, and then they're going to lead us in a couple of, uh, couple of songs, and so we're going to sing. I'm going to say a few words, and we're going to get right to it. So I tell you what, stand to your feet, bow your head, let's go to the Lord with a word of prayer. And we're going to take just a, a, a little bit of time to, to worship here before we have some scripture. So if you will, bow your head, let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this time together, and I thank you for the opportunity that we have tonight, Lord, what it is that's in front of us. We give you thanks for it, and we give you praise for it. And Father, I pray, Lord, that tonight that your spirit moves in a wonderful way throughout, within the minds and the hearts of everyone that's here. Lord, you know who we are. You know what we bring in here with us tonight. You know what's going on in our lives. And Father, I pray, Lord, that in a time like this, uh, that your spirit witnesses, that it ministers, uh, that it does wonderful things. And God, I pray as we offer this up to you, I pray that it's acceptable and pleasing to you. And, uh, and we're just so thankful for what it is that we get to share tonight. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. If you'll remain standing, we'll let the band lead us.
All right, tonight before we uh, call Andy up and go back for baptism, let me just go ahead and set this out of the way. I want to read you a passage, and we're going to talk about it for just a minute. You know, I've watched uh, a lot of different... Did y'all hear that? Is that that water? No. <laughs> I hear it. Hang on, i got to cut that off. I can't do that. This thing's roaring behind me. Hold on. <clears throat> Y'all do hear that, right? <laughs> Did it do it again? Where's it coming? Oh, it's the water pipes. Never mind. I can't cut that off. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Let me. <laughs> hmm. All right, let me read to you. I'm going to read Acts chapter 9. For seeing anything, uh, since I've been in ministry for 17 years, I've watched people come to Christ in a lot of different ways. You know, I've watched, them, I've watched people get saved in parking lots. I've watched them get saved in living rooms. I've watched them get saved at ball fields. I've watched them, you know, from Sunday morning service to Sunday night services to Wednesday night services. I saw a man give his heart to Christ one time when his child was being dedicated on a Sunday morning. And so, all different ways and all different avenues, I've watched people be called to Christ or led to Jesus, I guess you could say. And, and if there's anything I know is this, I know that God knows how to call people. I know He knows that. I know that He knows exactly what it takes or what they need in order to hear or to get their attention or to get a hold of them. You know, the night that I got saved, I told it many times, and I won't go into details of it, but it was in a small church on a Sunday night in Atala, and uh, my sister got saved that night, and it got me thinking about being saved myself. And so, following that up, after we went to my grandmother's house, I got saved beside my grandmother's bed, and it all got me thinking about it when my sister accepted Christ. Now, I can understand mom and daddy's reluctancy to you know, celebrate or readily accept my profession at that moment. Because I was younger than my sister. I was eight or nine years old at the time. I was younger than she was. I had just seen her do it. So in their mind, you know, there's this uh, me too thing going on. But for me, it was, it was God calling me. He knew how to reach me. He knew what it would take to, you know, to, to hit that nerve within me that opens myself up to who he is and what's going on in his life. And everybody in here's story is different to one degree or another. Everybody's story is different. Everybody's been called to him 
in different ways. I mean, the Spirit works in so many different ways. Sometimes it's through the work of a loved one in your life, or sometimes it's through the work of you know, your church, or a Sunday school teacher, or whatever it might be, Bible schools, Sunday schools, you know, all these avenues of which we come to, come to find out about Jesus. And I want to read you a story real quick in the Bible. It's in Acts chapter 9, and it's the place where Paul's conversion takes place. Or let me, re- let me rephrase that. This is the event that Paul refers to as his conversion. Let me read it to you real quick. It says, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murders against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogue of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone round from heaven, Then he fell on the ground, and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground... And when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now, I wonder, out of this experience, if if we don't have this experience, how do you convert a man like Saul, right? I mean, Saul was persecuting the church with commands from the high priest to put any person who professed Jesus as Savior to put him in jail, put him in prison, or stone him to death. He was coming with high authority, and he could do this anywhere he went. He could debate the Christian faith against the Jewish faith that he was a part of. He could stand his ground. Nobody could convince him that Jesus was the Messiah. You couldn't get further away from Christ than who Saul was. You couldn't, you, you couldn't champion a cause any worse than what he was standing up for and what he was doing and what he had already done to the church. How do you convert that man? I mean, he's already encountered some of the best there was to encounter. He had already talked to Stephen. He had heard some of the best sermons that anybody could preach. Stephen stood firmly and Stephen talked about who Christ was, about how Jesus died on the cross, and about how the, the high priest put Him to death. And he went on and on and on. And, and Stephen, the whole chapter 7 of Acts is nothing but a sermon from Stephen to Saul and the people that was gathered around there that day. And he's still left unconverted. He's still left as a person not knowing Christ. How do you convert that person? Do you leave that, op- do you leave that to me? To you? How do you convert that person? That person that, who knows what they hear, how they hear it, when they hear it. How do you convert that? I've got friends, I've got family members that I've often thought, you know, I I don't know, I've talked to them about Christ and I've presented Christ and and they've attended some of the best churches in their areas that they can go to and they haven't given in. You know, and, and so when I read this story, Jesus confronts Saul in a way that Saul heard him and realized who Jesus was. And I believe Jesus is faithful to do this for everybody. Now, my story is not like his. I didn't have that Damascus Road experience like Saul did. But I believe Jesus lets himself be known to everybody at one time or another. I believe he presents himself to you in a way that you will hear it. I believe he presented himself to Andy in a way that Andy heard him. I believe he presented himself to me in a way... That I heard him. My sister was completely different. Her experience was completely different. My dad's was very different than what mine was. Yours is different from mine, and all of ours is different from Paul. And when Paul talks about his conversion, this is what he talks about. This is what is this the conversation? Is this all there was that was said on that road that redirected Paul's life? This is all there was said at that moment. This is it. I mean, we're this is it. We can read this. I literally read this in 30 seconds. If more was said there, we don't have it recorded. This is, this is it. That redirected him. Changed his life forever. My point tonight is this. He knows us. God is not seeking to be some sort of corporation in our life to, uh, to, you know, to give us some do's and don'ts to live by. That, that's not the case. God's not seeking to... You know, to, to set us forth with, with all these rights and wrongs and, 
and live within that parameter. God is looking for a relationship with each one of us. And he comes at us armed with the most important thing about a relationship, with knowledge about who we are, intimate knowledge about us. He comes to Saul and he calls his name. He says, Saul, Saul. A number of times he calls him by name. He comes to us desiring a relationship and he comes to us in a very personal way. It's a very personal way. Don't, you, you, shouldn't, you should never desire any other way than the way that the Lord comes to you. You know, just, just because it wasn't this Damascus road or because it wasn't like my dad and the way that he was converted or people you know, God comes to us in a very personal way, in a way that where we can hear His voice and we know that He is after us. We know He is after us. You know, thinking back that night when I gave my heart to Christ, we'd gone by my grandmother's house to tell my grandmother about my sister, about her getting saved that night. And we stopped by her house and we was telling her about it. And while I was sitting beside her bed, she led me in this prayer and I prayed and accepted Christ into my heart, into my life. I remember it like it was yesterday. I didn't get the same response from mom and daddy that my sister got, you know? I mean, I didn't get the same response. I didn't, my conversion didn't draw the same response that hers did because of the avenues. It was different. I mean, she was at church. She was overcome with it. And she caved in and gave her heart to Christ. Mine was different. I almost literally was led to Christ by her hand. By her hand. And so I can understand their reluctance to say, well, look, he, well, he just, you know, he's just following his sister. But that night it was very real for me. He came to me in a very personal way, in a very real way, and he changed my life that night as much as a nine-year-old boy could have his life changed. Listen, tonight, you need to cherish the way God has made himself known to you. You need, to, you need to value that with all that you are, with everything that you are. That's your story. That's nobody else's story. That's yours. He called you by name in a very personal way, in a very personal place, and brought you out. You need to cherish that story like no other story in your life. Paul tells this story more than any story he tells. He tells about the way he was converted. Three or four times he goes over this with different people from governors to prisoners. Here is how I was converted. There was a time for all of us at one time or another when Christ called us by name. Now, obviously I didn't hear an audible voice like Paul did or maybe like some of you have, but I felt him pulling in a way of which I knew that it was him. And you did too at one time or another. So whatever your story is, Hold on to it with all that you've got. Be thankful for it and remember it. Remember it. There are times, even now, 17 years or going on 18 years now that I've been pastoring, that I have to revisit that Sunday night down in the towel beside my grandmother's bed. And I have to remember that moment of when he called me by name. I have to remember that moment. I remember that time. I remember that. I remember what happened that night. I couldn't explain it to save my life. But I know it did. So I want to encourage you to remember yours, cherish yours, and own it. It's yours. It's very personal. He found you. He called you. He brought you out. So tonight we're thankful for him calling Andy out and for Andy receiving that. So we're going to ask Andy to come on up here if you will. Andy, if you want to come on up here with me. <clears throat> i got three or four questions here we're going to ask him. Then we're going to have a word of prayer and we're going to make our way make our way back here. All right. Do you truly and earnestly repent of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life? Do you desire to be baptized in this faith? Yes. Will you then obediently keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in the same all the days of your life? Yes. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this time together tonight. I thank you for the blessings you give us and for the opportunities that you present us. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for, for calling us, for knowing us 
enough and caring about us and loving us enough to call us by name. Lord, I pray that throughout this congregation, God, I pray that those that may not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray that they leave here tonight listening. I pray that they leave here tonight expecting, knowing that you're going to come to them in a way of which they know. Thank you so much for who you are and for loving us and caring for us and coming to get us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Tim, if you want to play something, come on down this way. We'll be back here in just a second. There's a better version of me that I can't quite see, but things are gonna change. Right now I'm a total mess and right now I'm completely incomplete, but things are gonna change. Cause you're This is redemption story With every step that I'm taking Every day you're chipping away what I don't need And this is me under construction This is my pride being broken And every day I'm closer to who I'm meant to be I'm a change in the name Wish I could give a little more of me Without stopping to think twice Wish I had faith like a little child Wish I could walk a single mile Without tripping on my own feet Father, I thank you, Lord, for this time. I thank you for who you are and for what this represents tonight. Father, a washing away, a cleansing, a, a resurrection, a new life that we have in you. And Father, we give you thanks. We ask for your blessing upon the water and for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Andy, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
you love us. Thank you for the way you have made us. We were created for your pleasure, for your presence, for the glory of your name. Thank you for the way that you love us. Jesus, faithful King, Lord, with grateful hearts we sing. How great is the love, how great is the love of our
thank you for the way that you love us, you love us. Uh -huh. <laughs> we'll ask you, if you will, if everybody will stand. Andy, you want to come up here with me? We're going to have a word of prayer, then we'll invite you to come around. Tell them you love them and that you're praying for them. So let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time, and we thank you for this opportunity tonight, and we thank you for Andy. Father, we pray, Lord, that you just work in him in a wonderful way, uh, that you just uh, continue to create in him the person, Lord, that you want him to be. Father, we know that this is going to be a, a great journey ahead, and, and, and we know that you're with us every step of the way. Uh, as we're changed more and more into the person you want us to be. And we thank you for him. Help us to be the church to him, Lord, that you've called us to be. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Come around tell him that you love him. Stand right there, Andy. Amen. Oh